Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and to another fixed video. And do you know when you buy a Seiko calculator C439 and the keyboard just doesn't want to work? Well, I think I found a fix for this problem and I know there are many uh, Seiko calcs out there, uh, C439s, that have this issue and it's such a pity because it's such a beautiful watch. Uh, do watch the video until the end, uh, it's a two-segment uh, two video, well in the same video, but in the first part you will see the fix and right uh, before the end uh, there's a small segment of about a couple of minutes where I give you a few tips and tricks and clarify a few things. So before uh, starting with the questions below, make sure you watch that segment also because the answer to your question might be right, might, might be right there. Uh, okay, so let's go to the bench and start this fix. Yeah, so here it is on the bench and this is how the watch looks like with its front button plate removed. This would sit right there uh, and this is one of the tiny buttons uh, which is fitted from underneath like that. Now the part that is always the failure and always the reason uh, for why the front buttons aren't working is not here because that part is actually a rubber uh, frame, if you will, that has a dual roll. It will hold this keyboard, this front plate into place and it has a special shape uh, such that a button press on any of the buttons will be transferred as a press into one of those holes. And get this, it's not even depicted in the service manual for this watch. But I have here something else that will make you understand how that is supposed to look like. Now this is pulled from a different calculator watch, but that rubber membrane uh, is similar in construction. So basically you would have uh, the buttons here, it would have a, a rubber part in the middle, and you would have these small, uh, I don't know how I would call them, protrusions that would uh, go inside those holes and actually when you press any of the buttons the movement would be transferred uh, to the contacts. Now I'll try to describe briefly exactly what I want to do. Take some small uh, studs made out of plastic, I would fit them in those holes uh, so they would have to be freely moving in those holes and then I'm going to pour over them uh, some liquid silicone. Uh, and then I would have to find a way to fit this over. So you're going to laugh at me for what I'm going to do as plastic studs. But the silicone, uh, it's a regular liquid silicone, a two-part. Uh, this is how solid it will become. This is just a, a piece of that silicone, just so you can see the consistency of it. Uh, but back to the studs. What I'm going to use and get ready, it's going to be pretty gross, but I'm going to use uh, some fibers from a hairbrush yeah I know it's gross but um, I think that from the stiffness perspective and the shape they would be excellent replacements and cut them to an appropriate length So if I didn't say it already, uh, these are 1.5 millimeters tall by uh, one millimeter across. Uh, that one millimeter across can be one millimeter or 0 0.8 millimeters, you can get away with that. I think mine are about 0 0.9, 0 0.85. All right, now before I add those little studs to these recesses, I want to case the module just because um, once I have those studs in place, um, I will have to pour the silicone over them. And what I want to, what I want to do is uh, add a bit of uh, two-part resin to these uh, small cracks, for, the, for lack of a better term, uh, just to make sure silicone doesn't end up in those.
After setting in that resin, I uh, actually took it under the microscope. All the work you see here is done under 20x magnification. And it might look a little bit messy, but that can be cleaned up. And for the job of stopping that silicone from overflowing into cracks I don't want to, it'll be excellent. So now we are at the crucial step of this fix. Uh, and basically what we're going to do, we're going to place those studs in these little holes and then uh, cover them with a layer of silicone. Um, I use uh, two-part silicone because that's what I have on hand and I believe it's important to be transparent because once you apply that silicone those little studs may move so you need to uh, see through the silicone and just use a needle to straighten them uh, right after the pour. All right so now we're going to place those little studs in the holes, uh, mix up some of this gel and apply it thin layer with a syringe. So the silicone has set and I don't know if you can see but the silicone has climbed up onto the edges. I, I don't know if there is a way uh, to stop that from happening uh, because that's the nature of the silicone. Um, what I want to do is uh, go around with a craft knife at the edge, around the edge and just uh, remove that excess because uh, at this point I, it's, the, the faceplate, if I'm trying to sit it here, it, it doesn't, it should uh, sit lower down. Um, but uh, because we have that silicone up on the edges, uh, it won't let it sit properly. And now that we have the keyboard and buttons in place, uh, what we have to do is mix some two-part resin and apply it along the edge, which will be done under microscope because I have a pretty small gap to fill and I have to be careful. Uh, but I can't just go ahead and fill everything up from one go because it will, as you can see, it keeps moving very easily. So what I'm going to do is center it and then apply some glue uh, to the corners. Let it uh, sit and dry for about two hours and then follow up with the rest of the glue. And our keyboard is looking really well and uh, situated there. Uh, as you can see in the four corners the glue has dried and all it's left to do is mix up some of that epoxy again and just uh, do the final gluing in place. All right, so I'm done. And I, actually I'm not done because you might say, oh my God, what a shitty glue job. Uh, yes, you're right. But uh, that's how precise I can uh, lay this glue and I even did it under the microscope. But I do know that if I let it sit for around uh, five to 10 minutes, I can uh, do quite nice corrections. Um, so yeah, this will be uh, polished up a bit later. Not literally polished, but uh, improved.
that came out better than I expected. And this is the point in the video where I give you a few uh, tips and tricks. Uh, if you made it this far and plan to watch, then that means that you really want to do this fix. So pay attention for around three minutes. Uh, I have notes here, uh, so I'll be quick. Uh, the first one is you might have noticed that my epoxy, which fixed the keyboard, the face split in place, was gray, and in the final shots it was dark. Well, yeah, I used the Sharpie. Seemed to work pretty well. It didn't smudge afterwards. Uh, you can do the same if you have a different colored epoxy. Uh, yeah, the dimensions of the studs are uh, one point between one and 0 0.8 millimeters in diameter. Uh, and they are between 1.3 and 1.5 millimeters tall. Uh, next one is use transparent silicone. Uh, I think I mentioned this, but right after you uh, pot the silicone, um, those little studs might move. So you need to be able to see through the silicone and uh, quickly adjust them. Uh, the next one is in case you worked with uh, potting and making silicone molds before, you're familiar with what a wax release agent is. Do not use that at any point uh, on the watch. If it will get inside the uh, watch, uh, it will basically destroy your zebra strips. It happened to me. Next one is do not use super glue at any point uh, in this fix. Uh, moreover, do not use super glue anywhere close to watches. Uh, the next one is, uh, yeah, the glue. Uh, don't try to find the the epoxy that I used. You can use any two-part epoxy that uh, cures solid. Um, another important one is you might have seen me doing this with a naked eye, but that was just so uh, I could look at the camera's viewfinder. 80% of the work was done under a microscope. You should do that too if you want to get a, a nice job and uh, 20x magnification is what you need. Uh, another one, the studs uh, must not be metal. Uh, they might, uh, there's a membrane underneath the studs, which uh, if you use metal studs with time, it may penetrate and will render the keyboard useless again. So make sure you use plastic ones. And the last one is patience. <laughs> have patience. Uh, you might have to do rework. This, uh, op th this procedure is... Uh, not something that you can do quick. If it didn't come out right from the first time, do it again uh, and you will be satisfied with the results. And that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.